If you're selling on eBay, this is gonna be a very important video. By the end of it, you're not only gonna know, but you're also gonna understand exactly what you need to do to avoid what I like to call eBay prison. eBay prison means you've done something so bad that the algorithm has begun to struggle to trust you as a seller. You've noticed that your store traffic has started to plummet, resulting in your sales drastically falling. And depending on how bad you let things get it, eBay could even serve you a life sentence by terminating your account. And I'd know. Over the last two and a half years as a full-time eBay seller, I've actually suffered through three out of the four big, big mistakes that we're about to talk about in this video. And I wanted to put this video together because I don't want you to suffer what I had to go through. So make sure you pay close attention. Let's get into the first one. All right, guys, so this is a very big topic. And if you don't know about this, you really need to get your head around it quick. I will link all the details in the description below. But very briefly, Vero violations. Basically, what it refers to is the Verified Rights Owner Program. Now, this program has been put in place by eBay to help protect the intellectual property rights of companies out there that have trademarks, copyrights, and other intellectual property. Let's put it this way. Let's say that you're a seller and you're selling an item that includes a logo or a design that belongs to someone like Disney. There could be a Disney character that you're trying to sell. If the owner of that logo or design sees your listing, they can actually submit a notice to eBay's Vero program, letting eBay know that you're using their intellectual property. Now, from there, eBay receives that notice and they send you a message and also pull down your listing. And they let you know that you've breached the Vero violation and it is just an initial warning. Now, that's the process. And from there, you dive into it and you manipulate other listings that may get caused uh, similar sort of breaches. But I, I didn't read that when I first got a Vero violation. I never read my message. I was six to 12 months into the game, had no idea, had never even heard of the term Vero. And uh, I ignored the message or I just marked it as red and I never read it. And uh, I saw four pairs of Nike shoes. Nike is on the Vero list. And I had four pairs of shoes that came offline and uh, I went, well, that's a bit funny. Let's put them live back again. So I shot them back up to, to be purchased and, and shot them back up for as they were. And uh, the, the strike that I had held against me for those four pairs of shoes was it was a parallel imports violation. That was the email that I had missed. And the parallel import violation refers to me trying to sell a shoe internationally into the European Union where Nike themselves had never actually even launched the shoe themselves. And for that, I wasn't obviously then allowed to do it myself. So that was one example of a Vero violation. There are a lot of different ways that you can get pulled up with Vero violations. Uh, and because it was the second warning and I'd missed the first warning and I put the shoe back live, I actually got a five day suspension. That was the next step. It was five days of just no, no activity, no sales, no traffic. Uh, every single one of my listings at that point were taken down and I was having to have a breather for five days. Now, within a six month window, I was told that if I was to get a second breach, it would be a two week suspension. And if I had another breach after that, it was a termination of my eBay store. So there's some very, very significant reasons why you need to get your head around this information. All of it is gonna be down in the details in the description below. So dive into that and get your head around it because it's a big, big thing. Another very big topic here, guys, is seller performance levels. Now, there are three different sections of this. Uh, you've got a below standard, above standard, and a top rated seller. There's some pretty big implications if you fall into the below standard section. eBay, every single month, reevaluates you. There's a, there's a seller performance tab on your eBay seller hub, and it will show you what you're expected to be in the following month's evaluation. Now, there's, there's three main areas that you need to keep on top of. It's not hard, but if you do fall below, there's some significant impacts on your traffic. You don't get as many page views. You don't get as many impressions. You have to pay more in fees as well. I think there's an additional 5% in fees. And if you're at a point where you've only got a sort of a limit on the amount of listings that you can do each month, um, they're gonna hold you at that. And they're gonna say, let's just get you into above standard before you bump up how many listings you can do as well. So you just don't wanna fall into that gray area. And uh, the biggest one that can get you there really quickly is the case is closed without seller resolution. And uh, well, look, what that refers to, is a buyer opening up a case for a number of different reasons. The first one might be uh, that they haven't received an item in the post. Your responsibility now to have a look at it. It's not eBay's. eBay's there as a bit of a backup. You can consult with eBay to try and get some help and understanding around what you can be providing as a form of feedback for your buyer. Um, but it's, it's, it's your job. You've got to go ahead and do it. And if you don't, if eBay does step in and they provide a refund on your behalf, then you're impacted with a cases closed without seller resolution. Now it's 0.3% or less. The minute you basically have one case opened against you and you do nothing about it, 
you almost immediately fall into below standard and you're starting to get all of those negative impacts on your account. So I cannot strongly recommend more for you to be making sure you're on top of any case the second it gets opened against you, make sure you jump into it. The next one as well in this little allocation of uh, things to consider is late shipment rates. Now, I talk about on this channel a lot, making sure you're a one day shipping and handling time and get your shipping out. And that includes a tracking number. Now, you're not gonna get the case opened up against you if you're supplying a tracking number in the first place. It's a great way to limit the number of cases that get opened up. Um, if you've got a tracking number, they have to deal with Australia Post or you in the case can just resubmit the tracking number to provide verification that you've given everything you can and it's on Australia Post end to make sure the item gets delivered. But uh, a late shipment rate could be that you say that you're a one day shipping and handling time, but you're actually a two to three day. And if that's the case and your percentages build up, 5% is the maximum. 5% of your total volume of sales, if they are more than 5% late, then you're gonna slip a little bit. And um, you don't wanna do that because that will obviously put you in some bad territory. And then the other one as well is a transaction defect rate. Now the transaction defect rate, a big one here, the minute you get a case closed without seller resolution, you also get a transaction defect rate. So you don't want that for two reasons. Um, but the other one as well is um, canceling or being out of stock. Say for instance, you have a horrible SKU system, none of these tubs have any order to it, and you've accidentally sold an item on Facebook Marketplace, and then it's gone on to sell on eBay. That means that you don't have the product. You are out of stock and you're gonna to need to cancel the item. And if you do that, you're gonna get a defect. And as you can see by the graph here, 0.5% or less of total transactions, we're talking less than 1%, so you don't get too many of these up your sleeve, you're gonna fall into an above standard range. So what will suck is that you won't have the top rated seller status, but you won't quite be in a below standard if you're out of stock a few different times. But you don't wanna be in that, you wanna be top rated all the time. Um, but if you go 2% or more of total sales that are out of stock, then you're falling into the below standard and, and obviously all those implications that we spoke of uh, comes back into play. So there you go. There, there's a bunch of information on the Seller Hub to show you guys where you're gonna be at and where you're projected to be at. And just make sure, just make sure at the minimum, you're at least above standard. Now the next one, I've, I've definitely got to put my hand up for this, ignoring stale inventory. And what that refers to is being so dogged around trying to go out and find brand new stock that you neglect the stock that you've had sitting there for a few months. Now really, eBay is gonna give you the best chance of having an item go on to sell in the first 30 days. You could class stock as a little bit older the minute it hits 31 days. So what are you doing about that? If you're just sitting there and ignoring it and letting the months go by, you're almost at a point where eBay is literally like, this item is so dead that there is no chance of it having it sold. So that means that you've got a lot of tubs behind you with a lot of stock that literally isn't being seen by any customers whatsoever. And when you go into months and years of inactivity, you may as well not have the listing up at all. So what can you do to try and get some sales out of these old dead stock items that are just sitting in your store not being looked at. The end relist strategy is a fantastic one to just kind of keep fresh listings coming into your store that are already in your store. And what that refers to is just manipulating the price ever so slightly, maybe reducing it by five or $10, and then ending the item, going up and then relisting the item up. And what that does is it actually produces a new order number, a new account number. And in the eyes of eBay, it looks like a brand new listing. So it's fresh again, it's got its 30 days, to go again. The other one as well that you can look at is a category markdown sale. Now I do that quite regularly. I'm running a 15% off special pretty much every single month uh, around my clothing and my accessories. I've found that clothing is quite a, a long sell through rate. Uh, it takes a long time to sell. So I've got a 15% off special at all times. So it's just a very attractive listing when you see it with a big red 15% off markdown. Uh, and that's been able to generate a few sales from dead stock items. It's, it's just got a bit of interest around it. Uh, by doing that. The other one as well is an individual item price drop. You can actually just go into your listings, look at your listings and go, I know that's been up on a few rotations of 30 days rollovers. Um, let's just significantly drop it by, say it's a hundred dollar item, let's make it 40 bucks. It just has to go, it's been here for too long. It's a little bit more time consuming, but you can certainly go in and pinpoint items that you know have been around for a while and do that big price reduction and that might get things moving for you. Um, the other one as well is you could be using coupons. Coupons have been massive for me, guys. Ever since the coupons came into the game, I've actually blanketed my entire store. Every single item, you can go ahead and use a 15% off coupon at checkout. And uh, a, lot, a lot of people are using it because it's a pretty damn good offer. Um, I'm making sure that I'm, I'm catering for that though when I'm building my price. So it's a $50 item, I'm listing it up for $55. 
because I'm assuming there's going to be a $5.50, 10% off reduction. Hopefully it sells for $49.50. So a um, couple of ways around trying to not lose too much money with the coupon, um, but it certainly gets those old items moving when you're seeing the coupon at checkout um, for anything that you might be interested in store. Uh, and then also too, it might not be nice, but just accepting any lowball offers that come in. You might get a really nasty offer of $40 for that $100 item, and you might go, look, it's been there forever. Any money's good money. It's always good to just try and get capital back in your hand of any kind. So from a cash flow perspective, you're good to go again. You can go out and buy better stock that you know is gonna turn over in a quicker sell-through rate. Um, so not neglecting old stock, I think, is a big mistake. You've really got to have a game plan. You've got to have a weekly structured plan of how you're continually manipulating what you've already got in there. Now, for me, I've got 2,200 items in my eBay store, and I can tell you that for a good six to 12 months, about a year ago, I went completely inactive of trying to deal with old stock. And there was a lot in there that I had to completely flick out, and I pretty much lost all money because I was just growing too quickly with the new stuff that I was buying. But if I had a bit of a game plan in place, then it wouldn't have been as much of a concern. So number three, make sure that you're doing something about your old stock. Now, this one is a really tough one to see, guys. Uh, the life sentence, just giving up on eBay way too soon. I see it all the time. People just get incredibly frustrated. They aren't hitting the sales numbers that they wanna be seeing and they've given up, given up within the first one to three months. Now, through my experience, I have realized that eBay is a marathon and not a sprint. You've gotta be working on this every single day. You've gotta be not seeing results for a very long time before things start to work for you. And you're gonna be learning more than you're gonna be selling in the beginning. Now, for me, it took a long, long time to make sure that I was actually sourcing the right items. There was a lot of bad buyers that weren't going on to sell a lot of old dead stock inventory very early on until I started to learn a thing or two and remain consistent with my listings. That is so crucial that for the first 500 listings, you shouldn't even be considering how many sales that you make. Uh, you've got to understand that it really does take three or four months to build up the algorithm at any select number of listings that you give yourself. If it's five listings a day, to try and get three to four sales a day, you've got to be listing five listings for a few months. And if you want to jump up like I have from 10 listings to 20 listings, I know that I won't see the big you know, $20,000 a month worth of revenue uh, for a few more months. It's going to take a while for the algorithm to register. Hey, this guy's been doing 20 listings now for a fair while and we're slowly building his sales up. So it's just such a long process to get the ball rolling and you really need to understand that and just not give up on it because it will be the biggest killer out there for your eBay store is to just simply give up and just stop listing and hope that the sales continue to come in because I can tell you right now, they won't. It's the biggest thing that you can do is to have some form of consistency and measure uh, with your store. So please don't give up on it. Please remain positive. Uh, keep sourcing those really good items that sell through well. And you'd be amazed after a couple of months at how quickly things start to change and you start to see sales come through. So while they are four very, very big things that you need to make sure that you're not doing, there are also 10 big things that you need to make sure that you are doing. And I've made a video about it right here. So make sure the mistakes are covered and tick off these ones. We'll see you in the next video.